and welcome to Yachting Monthly's How To Series, brought to you in association with GJW Direct. I'm Matthew Sheehan, and over the course of 13 episodes, we're going to be dealing with some of the key issues when it comes to maintenance and talking to some of the experts to get their tips. In this episode, we're going to look at how to tie up your boat, which lines to use, and what they do. So we've got a boat here, a typical boat on the dock, and we're just going to look at how it's been rigged up and what the various lines do. Most of all, we can see there are four lines. We've got a, two breast lines, one at the bow and we've got one at the stern. The breast lines are there to stop the boat moving sideways away from the dock. You're then going to have two spring lines, one running backwards, which stops the boat going forward, and one running forward, which stops the boat going backward. And if we just let the boat sit there for a while, there's a bit of wind today, you'll see those spring lines coming under load and doing their work. Now, your boat may not have a center cleat such as this. In that instance, you're simply going to attach your bow and spring lines on one of the cleats at the front and on the cleat at the back. Does exactly the same job, just a different way of securing the boat. And in fact, when we come to manoeuvre the boat off the dock, you're going to want your bow, your spring line, attached at the front or stern of the boat. So it can in fact even be a, a preference to do it that way. One final consideration when you're docking your boat is the length of your spring line. Your spring lines should be made of a nice stretchable nylon material such as this three braid rope here. You need to be using this because it has a certain amount of stretch and flex in it which gives a spring-like function to the line, hence its name. If you use halyard material or Dyneema rope you're going to have a lot of snatch loads onto your boat. Then we're looking at the length of the spring itself. Your spring needs to be a nice long line because the longer the line, the more flex, the more stretch there is in that line. So if, for instance, this spring line had been taken from the cleat there down to this cleat here, the length of it would be so short that it wouldn't have that nice dampening effect on the boat and the line itself would be subject to very high loads and liable to snap. The longer the spring line, the better the job it's going to do. So now we're coming to look at how the lines have been done on the dock. This is just a, a typical setup of what we might find um, from a cruising or a charter boat. The issues here are fairly self-explanatory. We have a lot of oxos going onto the cleat. Now, our preferred method at Rubicon 3 is to have a bowline on the cleat at the dock although a round turn and two half hitches will do the job just as nicely. We will put that over the cleat and then pull all the slack of the rope in onto the boat, finished with an oxo onto the cleat on the boat. We never put a bowline onto the cleat on the boat because it needs to be ready to be released under pressure. That technique will remove all of that rope on the cleat there and leave a nice clean cleat ready to be used. When you're doing your bowling it's quite a nice thing to do a large loop which allows you to put a double loop over the cleat which if the boat then jumps up and down or the pontoon moves around stops any risk of that bowling coming away from the cleat. Other things we can do is we can take that loop of the bowline and feed it through the legs of the cleat and then wrap it over and pull that tight. It's another nice way to keep it secure. And finally, for those who prefer, rather than using a bowline, we can simply use a round turn and two half hitches. There is no right or wrong way to do this. The main thing is to use a bowline or a round turn two half hitches and make sure that it's securely around the cleat. Now as with everything on mooring a boat there's a lot of different opinions as to which ways to do it. 
Our personal preference is not to have these spliced lines or in fact even to use a bowline on the boat itself as should that line come under load there's a problem and you need to release the line from the boat there's no way of doing it. That's why we will only use a, uh, an OXO on the boat and bowlins off the boat. If you suspect there's going to be some strong weather or you're leaving your boat alone for some time, it can be a nice idea just to double up your lines. That gives you a bit of added security should one of the lines fail. Here we've got two lines, one going to the port cleat, one going to the starboard cleat. Ideally, you might even use two different cleats on the dock. Here we only have the one cleat, but we have double the protection of our boat. And that can just be a nice thing if you think there might be some, uh, some stronger weather coming through. Lines can be liable to a lot of chafe. They're often going around sharp edges or over harbour walls. So do at the start and through your season, keep a real eye on any chafe. Here you can see this line suffered some significant chafe and really should be replaced before the boat is used further. Um, and this is just a, a part of running a boat. These things will happen, but you need to keep an eye on them. Well, thanks for watching, I hope that was of help. Make sure that you like us, make sure that you subscribe to us and stay in touch for the next episode.